Hello, boyos. Welcome to the spoiler cast for the MCU. We watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2 um, yesterday. Jay came over, we hold hands, we had some popcorn, and we watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2. My name is Nick, and my other You didn't even have popcorn. I know. My other compadre was, uh, was it was, and is, still, <laughs> Jake. Um, how you doing, Jake? Don't I'm worry. alive. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. We're using Man. that joke. We're using it. Here we go. More like still breathing, but I'm barely alive. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> uh. Uh. So we watched Guardians too. True. And I know, I know for a fact you like this movie a lot. I it's do. One of your favorite. It's I one do. of your favorites. Um. And there's a lot in this movie. Um, I want to know what do you think of this movie? Like, what are your thoughts? Your, my your thoughts? initial thoughts. My initial thoughts is it's fine. Really? I I like this movie. I don't like the parts I don't like, parts with Taser Face. I feel like all of that the joke about Taser Face's bad name is real stupid. I love it. Like the joke sucks so bad. They're like making fun of his name for Taser Face. Like if his name was like uh, like uh, you know, Ben Dover or something like that and he just doesn't realize that his name is stupid. And he's like, oh shit, I guess I guess my name is stupid. But it's like Taser Face. Ah, oh, that is so funny. Your face your name's Taser Face. I it's not funny to me. And like the whole crew goes crazy. That whole scene I don't like. I like the scene where uh Groot's like grabbing a whole bunch of different random shit and trying to get the fin to them. That's a cute scene. And I like the scene where he's whistling and killing everybody on the ship. That's a good scene. But everything else about that scene is just like, man. I, so I will say James Gunn definitely has a shotgun approach when it comes to comedy where he just shoots as much as he can at the wall. Right and, in your face. Yeah. And some of it will stick and some of it won't. And I'm kind of okay with that approach because I think most of it does stick. I thought the taser taser face definitely stupid, but I think it's one of those things where it goes on so long that like I I couldn't help but laugh. You know what I mean? Oh, like, it, oh, so you're like a fan of SNL then? I'd love SNL. Oh God, yeah. I, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that do. makes sense. Where they just fucking beat a fucking joke that's not funny into the into no, your but face that's how until... comedy works though. Like it'll it'll it's funny at first and then it goes on too long and you're like this is kind of dumb and then it goes on so long that you're like oh my god this is getting ridiculous it's kind of funny again and i feel like there's a lot of that in guardians of the galaxy part two and i i really love that shit also i think visually this movie is one of the most impressive mcu movies i think the cg work in this movie is like out of this fucking world uh no pun intended out of this yeah. galaxy i i think it's just like it's so fucking good from the onset when they're fighting that monster and it's just like panning between like groot the and the monster and the fighting like there's so many good shots like that and the movie's so colorful like when they're on the the ship with the with the gold people like there's like gold hue over everyone and it's so it's so james gunn this movie like there is so much style and substance to this movie that I, and it's so fucking, even the smallest things are so fucking funny. Like the scene where they're flying away and they're like, something killed all those ships. Who did it? And it's just his dad, like riding a ship <laughs> and he's just like waving. <laughs> like, it's just so stupid and funny. Like, I, I love all that shit. I love guardians too okay so i'm gonna piggyback off that and say all the cgi yes it is very fantastic and it is very believable however i do not like how much fucking cgi is in this movie i feel like anything with that amount of cgi won't last no, none of this movie is going to stand the test of time i mean this it movie, came out in 2017 it's 2022 it still looks phenomenal right but Give it, give it 10 years. All the references. We're almost 10 years CGI. away from it. We're almost it's, 10 years. Okay. I, I think mean, the I'm CG looks give, great. It is, it is for me, I just don't think this movie is going to stand up. I wish Marvel in general in, the rec in these recent, more recent films is, I wish they would do more practical shit. 
you you don't see a whole lot of practical shit in these movies, so especially I, especially this one, because granted they're in I space, that, but also you can build sets and shit. And I I do like the little things like the one inch man saved us. You know, I think that's funny as fuck. But but then you have it up against, you know, the gold people who's like rolling out a carpet for their queen and the fucking roller hilarious. stops working. I'm just like, dude, hilarious. this sucks. This sucks, dude. It sucks so bad. I hate it. I it's, disagree. I disagree. I like, love that James Gunn is like, we need to put these stupid gold creatures in here. And I think they're dumb as fuck. So I'm going to make them dumb as fuck. I love that shit. That's but why I love James Gunn. And everything like, is dumb as fuck. In let me movie. push back on like the, the, the CG practical thing. I think there's there's a fair amount of practical stuff, but most of this movie is a lot of CG. Uh, but I think the reason it works, and honestly, let's let's keep it real here. James Gunn kind of set the course on like what MCU space looks like. He's the guy yeah. that really set that tone, and they've kept with that. He was even a consultant on um, Infinity War and Endgame as like the space unit guy because they went to him to be like. Uh, what does it look like? And I think it works so well, even in CG, and I think it will stand the test of time because I think he went with such a fantastical, over-the-top-looking space that it's almost a little cartoony. So, like, when you go back to it in the future, it's still going to look, like, cartoony and fantastical and weird. And I think that's what he's going for, and I think that will help this movie like stand the test of time unlike uh you know uh, you know S star wars when they had leia's crappy stupid cg face in rogue one um I see i think that looks okay still i'm i was thinking more of like phantom menace you know that whole movie is cg and you get to coruscant and it's like oh these buildings look fucking terrible yeah um but like back in the day they looked fine it looked great because it was like, wow, this is new technology. I don't, I don't even think they looked that good back in the day, though. <laughs> I don't know. I was fucking 12. Um, I don't know. For me, they look great. For a 12 year old, looked fantastic. Looked like another world. Naboo, beautiful. Um, look back at it now. I'm like, oh, this is just this is this is shit. Um, and I feel like that's what it's going to be for this movie. It's just like. I, I don't know. There's there. And, and the story of this movie kind of sucks. Why? I Why know do you you're going to disagree with that. The story in this movie, there's Why? there's no reason for any of this to happen. What do you mean? What so, do you mean? So they got hired to defend these. What do you mean? They got, they got hired to kill a monster for these gold people. They right. end up stealing the battery, a, a, a part of what they are hired to defend. The gold people don't like this. They start shooting. Out of fucking nowhere, Ego's just like, I murdered... Well, they didn't murder because they were all robotic drones. He destroys so many fucking ships. And it just happens upon fucking Quill, right? I, I don't like, think he just your, happens upon I'm Quill. Your dad. He says it like, hey, because of the events of the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie... Uh -huh. I was able to find you. Why didn't he just fucking hire them? What do you mean? The gold, just... people, the gold people fucking hired them. I, I read online that this movie takes place six months after the events of Guardians 1. Okay. So, like, it's not like much time has passed. Especially right. for a Celestial, where he's just like, I'm just trying to get my I sleep find, up. I find it very strange that he just happens to be there. Like, he's like, this is where they are. I'm going to go there instead of like sending out like a I, I'm nitpicking here like this this because we're you focused in on it but but he has no one else in his life besides Mantis he doesn't right. have anyone he can send out besides Yondu no but like a freaking like phone call how did he contact Yondu <laughs> how did he contact how were any of these people contacting each other they all have these fucking like screens that They're pop up space, and go we're, man. we're after you like okay space exactly space is fucking massive and ego just happens upon he's a celestial battle. man that means fucking nothing it means fucking nothing 
What do you mean it means nothing? He's a fucking planet. They say it why? in the movie. Yeah, why would he leave his planet? He says he has to come back to his planet, otherwise to he'll get die. his son. No, to back get to his, his son. Planet. He will die if he stays out in space too long. Why in Earth? Why on Ego would he ever leave his planet? just to search for his son because the only way he can expand it is by having a second celestial to expand his his world right well, i get that so i, I get he, the plot and he's gone through so many different kids over the course of time that he's you know i'm sure when peter was taken by michael rooker or or yondu uh he was like, ah, whatever. It's just another one. But then he heard all the stories about Star-Lord, and he's like, I need to get this kid. He maybe mm -hmm. has the juice in him, you right. know? And then he gets him, and he did have the juice in him. Right. I think it I makes just, perfect sense. But then but then he takes him back, and then you have the fucking cliched-ass wall of history where it's like, and this is the start of this civilization and how they became to use tools, and then they be built cities yeah. and then they and it was just like dude this is the worst way to fucking have exposition in a movie ever Disagree. just fucking pictures of bullshit put on the walls for no reason Disagree he's a planet he can control that shit he's yeah, just okay showing If them. he can control that shit why doesn't he just play a movie for them rather than That's going, what he's a... doing But he's not he's he, they're moving down a fucking hallway and they're going, look at this image, and it goes whoop, and it moves, and it changes. And then they have to move to another fucking orb thing, and then have those images change. I it thought they were just no sitting in that answer. room. They're just sitting no, in they, that room. They move through They're just fucking, sitting in the room. No, no fucking rewatch it. They're just sitting they, in the room, they, and even if they, they are walking down a hall, who cares? It's bad. It's a bad It's a hallway. It's a it's good a, visual storytelling. No. No, I disagree. That is the cheapest, lamest what way to tell about? any exposition. <laughs> if it was more like, if there was no fucking connection to any character in that moment, other than mean? look at look at this story within a story, and then it's, it's topped off by it's topped off by by Gamora being like, "Yeah, we should hear this guy out." Like that is so good because it was quilled. It's like I'm not buying this shit. And Gamora's like, no, you should listen. Like, that is so good to show their, like, progression as, like, oh, she's getting closer to him from the first movie. And, like, there's so much of that shit in this movie for you to nitpick that they walk down a fucking hall? It's crazy! It, it's just <laughs> such a waste. If they, if they expanded <laughs> on any fucking part of Ego himself, he's a fucking planet. He can do whatever he wants. He, yes! Why, why don't they, like, go into a fucking bar? Like, this is also cliche, but a much better cliche. They go into a bar, and then he tells them all about it over a drink. And, you know, then uh, what's-her-face uh, is like, yeah, we should stay. This guy seems pretty cool. And then, <laughs> That you is know, such a minor like difference and so stupid to even care about. Y'all, I'm like... It's, it's, what? It w I feel like it wastes everything. There's no character development in that whole entire thing. And then the at the climax of the movie... He just fucking switches. He's just like, hey, I'm your fucking dad. And then he, he's like, let me show you something, son. Brings him over and goes, I killed your fucking mom. Die. That's not how it went at all. That's pretty much no, how it went. How it went is, oh, he's feeling the energy. And he's coursing mm -hmm. through his son. And he's telling uh -huh. his son, like, hey, you're going to live forever. Like, this is going to happen. And mm -hmm. all your friends are temporary. We're going to own this entire world. And Star-Lord is sort of feeling it. He's like, yeah, okay. Fuck those guys. I'm, I'm the guy. I and didn't then get that at all. Totally. He's like tranced by the starlights. And right, he's like, uh, right. And he's I feel looking like, at the future. Hold on. He's I looking like at in the future. I feel like in that moment, he doesn't think about his friends. Because yeah. there is a line where he goes. No, he doesn't. What about, what about my friends? And then it's at that moment where you see uh ego just fucking switch he's like they're fucking dead they don't matter no also, that is mom, not i killed your mom he doesn't even switch though because that's just who he is he's like so what about my friends and he's like well your friends are like a moment in time like it doesn't matter like you are 10 light years above them it doesn't matter you don't need them they're unimportant he's like okay and then he's like and i'll and like and he's like 
why'd you leave my mom though? And he's like, yeah, it was really sad that I had to put that tumor in her head. Thinking like, oh, Star Lord, he's on board now. He'll understand why I had to do that. And at that point, one of the most iconic scenes in any MCU movie too, with the with the zoom in on the face, but the face stays in the, and the background moves out and his whole dimension changes like such good visual storytelling right there. And I, I love that scene so much. And then he just fucking shoots him like that shit's so good, man. He's like, fuck my friends, but you killed my mom, you know, like, yeah, that's so good. OK, I, I don't I don't. What do you mean? The OK, more, I just went on a whole I, spiel and you say, OK, I, <laughs> <laughs> The more I think about this movie, the more I don't like this movie. Oh my god, it's so good. It's just, I don't think so. It has the basis of the story is like, of course, ego is a bad dude, but there's no. You get one moment where, um, where Peter Quill and Ego have a father son moment. Everything else after that. It's like, oh, you bonded with this man for like two seconds. Right. Yeah, because he's not his dad. Right. That's but the whole point. But there's no there's no reason for him to stay. That's the whole point. Yeah, there's and no he does no reason for him to stay. He doesn't. He fucking shoots him in the face. I just, and then I've, and then he has the moment with Yondu where he's like, You were my dad the whole time and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. That's the whole point of the movie. It's Yo- the best part of the movie. That is the that's, best that's part of the, the movie. That's the whole point of the movie is that fucking uh, uh Planet Man uh, Kurt mm-hmm. Russell, Planet Man, isn't his dad. Right. Of course, they only had one moment because it feels good to play catch with your dad. And that moment's so cheesy and funny, and I love it. And, uh, yeah, it feels good to play. It's like the it's like the episode of fucking Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, man, okay, where mm-hmm. Will Smith's dad comes, and he has these moments with his dad, and he's like, that's nice moments, but then he leaves. Uncle Phil's his dad. That's right, just like yeah. this movie. Fucking yeah. Yandu's his dad, not we fucking don't get, ego. We don't, get any, we don't get any of those moments with Yandu at all. What do you mean? We got him in the last movie for the most part. No, we didn't. Yandu was chasing him the whole fucking time. Yeah. We get like two moments with Yandu being, and like, they're like setting it up through this movie where he's like, "You think I actually did that because because I actually wanted to kill you?" Like, there, there's so many moments, and most of that is told through Rocket. Dialogue. Right, yeah. Because him and Rocket turns out same guy. I love that too. I love that. Great growth between Rocket and yeah. I love I love all that. How, I don't I don't understand how they're the same guy. I know I know it's said because he's too afraid to to let anybody close and he's you know he's he's well, they're uh, both scavengers and they both steal shit and they're both bad guys, but deep down they're really softies. Yeah. And I love that too. That's another thing I love about this movie. It's never Star-Lord playing the music, dude. It's Rocket. Rocket's the one playing the music. Because he loves the music, it's man. Because he likes Star-Lord. Yeah. Yeah, because they're buds. Yeah. And he'll do anything just like, for his bud. Just like Yondu. Right. I just feel like this movie is missing a whole lot. And it, <laughs> it, there, there's a lot of shit in this movie that just it doesn't matter. It, nothing of it matters, um, and I don't see how it fits into anything in in any of the MCU. What do you mean? Like what? What good does it do for the MCU in general? It doesn't matter. It's a good movie, and also it set up the Celestials, which we're still sort setting of. up. And a lot of these, this movie hasn't been even explored yet. We haven't gotten Guardians three yet, right? And- you know, we haven't even seen the the payoff to the end credits of that movie, where they're True. setting up Adam Warlock. Ad, yeah, and um, and new Yondu, I forget his name. Oh James yeah, Gunn's, James Gunn's brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's do some I love trivia. This movie. I think let's I do think some... this. I think this movie has some of the most style in in the MCU. I think it, and the fact that it doesn't like, you could just watch this movie alone. Like you don't need to watch any other MCU movie. And like, it's just a good family movie about family. 
I will give it that. You can watch it alone. It's yeah. not like Spider Man Far From Home. Yeah, yeah, where it gets a little confusing. It's like, like you what's don't going know what the here? fuck is going on. Yeah. Granted, um, these Guardians, Guardians 2 had no connection to the MCU until Infinity War. And I remember right. before Infinity War came out, we're like, how are they going to connect mm-hmm. these things? But they did it. Yeah. Let's get into some trivia or some fun facts. Uh, prop master Russell Bobbitt had difficulty finding the cassette decks used in the first film and all of the Sony Walkman headphones they found were broken. Bobbitt contract- contacted Sony to see if they had any available for filming. They did not. So he eventually created six from scratch. Fun fact. Uh, Kevin Feige and James Gunn uh, talks about creative freedom while making volume two. Gunn mentioned that he was given complete freedom to do whatever he wanted to do, but there was one thing in the film that he and Feige disagreed on. Neither would reveal what that moment was, but Feige admitted that he left Gunn's he let he let Gunn keep that particular moment in the final cut of the film, even though they hmm. disagreed on it. And that that's another thing. Fact. That's another thing I really love about this moment. This movie, Nick, is you know what it is. It feels so much more like its own thing than any other MCU movie, in my opinion. Like, and it feels so much more just James Gunn than even the first Guardians. Because the first Guardians still had that, like, gray haze to it. This movie doesn't have that. This movie is just like, we're we're going crazy. We're doing whatever we want here. And we're having a good time. Yeah. Uh, you know what that moment is, I bet? What's that? A taser face. <laughs> I bet it's the fucking floating guy in space with like the decrepit face. Oh, it could be. Could I be. Bet it's that. Um, that was a cool scene. That was a haunting scene, honestly. Um, when director James Gunn was writing the script for the movie and proposed the idea of Ego, the living planet, being Star Lord's father, Marvel told him that they did not have the rights to the character. The rights belonged to 20th Century Fox because of his because of his ties to the Fantastic Four and the Silver Surfer franchise. Since Gunn had no other characters in mind for Star-Lord's father, he had to ask Fox if they could, if he could use the character. Fortunately, Fox let them, uh, let, uh, agreed to let Marvel have Ego in return for Fox gaining more creative freedom over Negasonic Teenage Warhead set of superpowers in Deadpool. That's kind of cool. That's a fun fact. Uh, Kevin Feige hinted upon the various Easter eggs in the film. He says that many of these characters will appear in some of the upcoming Marvel Studio releases. I hope we get to see that crystal guy. A crystal guy? Uh, forget his name. What the fuck is his name? Crystal Face. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, he's, he's got like a really dumb name, if I remember. Crystal Guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. I looked it up earlier. Martin X is his name. Uh, apparently he's from Pluto. Yeah, I want more. I want more Crystal Daddy. Yeah, he's cool. I don't. I do not want more. Um. Uh. Oh, Adrian. Oh, that Stallone. Guy. Stallone. I do not I want, want more Stallone. Stallone. No, dude. Oh, no, I want man. more Stallone with his hair plugs. Come on, oh, no. God, he looks. Yeah. Dave Bautista's Drax makeup took ninety minutes to apply, down from three hours for the first film. However, however, he would have to sit in a sauna at the end of the day in order to get the makeup off. Oh, jeez. Had to bake him. Bake the makeup off of his fucking body. Yeah. That's rough. Crazy. Bradley Cooper only does the voice of Rocket Raccoon. Sean Gunn is the one who brings rockets on screen dude. presence to life. Dude, Sean Gunn. Best character mocapper. Yeah. Like... He did a weasel as well. He did Weasel also. Uh, have you seen the pictures of him in the green screen? Yeah. And yeah. like fucking Batista's like, <laughs> yeah, like stroking him. It was like, oh man, that's funny as fuck. Uh, according to the visual effects artist, Ego's planet contains one trillion polygons. At the time of the film's release, this was considered to be the biggest visual effect ever made. That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact. Dude, the visual effects in this movie are awesome. I love it. I love it all. No, oh, this one, 
This one says Taser Face in it. In Guardians of the Galaxy comics, Taser Face is a warrior from a cybernetically enhanced race known as the Stark. The Stark are an alien race that are found that found Iron Man technology and had accidentally crashed onto their planet. And as a result, they worship Tony Stark as their god. That would be cool. That would have been a cool thing, but that would be oh cool. Well. Oh well. Yeah, I I like the music in this movie too. Not not just like the the obvious like mm -hmm. music, but I mean like the score. I actually, yeah. like the score. Yeah, it's it's good. The bah, soundtrack bah, is bah, nice. Bah, bah. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Mm hmm. You got another? Uh, I got a couple more. Yeah, go for it. According to the director James Gunn, Groot always freezes when Drax catches him dancing because he knows Drax disapproves of it. In a scene from the film, Drax explains that he was attracted to his late wife because he, she steadfastly did not dance. Yeah. I, I love all the scenes with Groot and Drax, too. He's yeah, always so just good. fucking hitting on Drax. He's just like, fuck <laughs> you, man! <laughs> yeah. Just like a, sure. little, like a little kid would with their, like, uncle, you know? Mm -hmm. Drax yeah. has some, like, uncle energy going on. And I love, the, I love all the scenes with them and Groot. Like, uh, at the beginning, when Gamora's like, Groot, get out of here. <laughs> You're going to die. Waves. And then she's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that. That was that was really cute. Um, uh, James Gunn choreographed and served as motion capture model for Groot's dance during the open credit scenes. Oh. It took the visual effects team nearly two years to complete the CG rendering for the final scene. That scene is film. crazy good. That scene mm -hmm. looks crazy. Two also, years. Rocket, Rocket looks crazy in this movie. Like he looks so good in this movie. Yeah, he does. And uh, I love all the the like sick ass fight scenes with Rocket, dude. Like him jumping through the trees and like fucking all those dudes up. Like stuff was so cool. Um, man, these these are actually some really good ones. Honestly, uh, James, Gun uh, sorry, as Groot only communicates with the phrase, I am Groot in different inflections, James Gunn created a Groot version of the script for him and Vin Diesel, which contained each of Groot's lines in English. Yeah, I knew about that, actually. Yeah, that's cool. It's pretty sweet. Uh, stay on the Groot train. Baby Groot is actually the offspring of Groot. It's not the same character. We already knew that, but yeah, you know, it's a fun fact. Um, um, actually, did as you know in Star Wars? Uh, back to that like baby Groot thing where they had like a, a full script with actual dialogue. They did that mm -hmm. with star Wars too, for Chewbacca For Chewbacca. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew about that. It's crazy. That would be some cool stuff. Like to play a character like Chewbacca or Groot and know exactly what they're saying. Yeah. It's cool. That's that would be like really cool to, I actually like in this movie, you can kind of guess what Groot is saying for the most part. You're kind of like, okay, I mm -hmm. kind of, well, he doesn't guess. say. He honestly doesn't say a whole lot, and when he does, yeah. uh, Rocket's kind of translating for him anyway. Yeah, which makes sense because he's a baby. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be talking too much. Um, Stan Lee's cameo has him discussing previous adventures that include his cameos in other Marvel films. According to Kevin, Fe Kevin Feige, he was this was a nod to the popular theory that Lee is a cosmic entity in Marvel. Stan Lee clearly exists, you know, above and apart from the reality of all films. So the notion that he could be sitting on the cosmic pit stop during the jump gate sequence in Guardians was something very funny. It says, wait a minute. He's the same character who popped up in all these films. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Like that. um, also, he was talking to uh, to the Watchers, which I thought was a cool thing. Yeah, going like seeing uh, seeing what if. And you see the one watcher and he's, he's he's just chatting with watchers. I'm like, oh, that's where I've seen them before. It's kind of funny. Um, Kurt Russell never saw the original Guardians of the Galaxy uh, before getting hired to play Ego in volume two. Oh, huh. that's just a cool. fun fact for you. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so let's rank these. Let's start. Let's do it. Let's rank this bullshit. Uh, mama, mama, share my screen. This thing go live. There you are, sir. I gotta. Oh, here's here's one more for you. 
Uh-huh. There's a scene in volume two where Yondu comes into the scene and yells, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. That's Worker stated that he had done the scene several times with various ad lib versions of the line. Gunn adds that he has a lot of behind the scenes footage of Rooker saying the, that line complete with every curse word imaginable. So it's a fun fact for you. That is a good one. I can just <laughs> imagine. I'm fucking Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, asshole. That's like that episode of SpongeBob where it, it, they cuss and it's bleeped or whatever in the in the episode, but there's an actual version where it's the actors actually cussing. Really? I didn't yeah. know about that. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. Uh, you want me to read these or? I'll read it this time. I got All this. Right. You you read it this time. You remember you're going first on this one. Okay. By the way. Uh, by the way. at at number one we got Loki. At number two we've got Iron oh, Man. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. This is our rankings. This is the loner oh. cast rankings. This is so for those of you that don't know, this is the loner cast rankings. This is what we have decided we enjoy the most and we would watch again on a scale of one to whatever the fuck, however many movies there are. True. Um, and okay. go ahead. Sorry. So at number one, we've got Loki. At number two, we've got Iron Man. At number three, we've got Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. At number four, we've got Spider-Man No Way Home. At number five, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy. At number six, we've got WandaVision. At number seven, we've got Eternals. At number eight, we've got Captain America Civil War. At number nine, we've got Captain Ma- Captain America and the Winter Soldier. At number 10, we've got Spider-Man Far From Home. At number 11, we've got Spider-Man Homecoming. At number 12, we've got Captain America The First Avenger. At number 13, we've got Ant-Man. At number 14, we've got Doctor Strange. At number 15, we've got The Avengers. At number 16, we've got Hawkeye. At number 17, we've got Black Widow. At number 18, we've got Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 19, Iron Man 3. At number 20, Avengers Age of Ultron. At number 21, Iron Man 2. At 22, Incredible Hulk. At 23, Thor, The Dark World. And at 24, Thor. Um... You're going first, my guy. I would put this. <laughs> I guess I'd put it above. Uh, I would put it above Guardians of the Galaxy. And below Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. I'm OK with that. Really? After all the shit you just talked about it. I you know where I would I would put it. Yeah. Tell me. I would put it at number eight under Eternals. Let's put it there. Let's put no, it right I, I above Eternals. Right above Eternals? Yeah, I'm okay, okay. with that. Okay. Because I did, I did like it. Well, I did like it more than Civil War. Civil War is good, but it does have... Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think right up below Eternals, because I really enjoyed Eternals. But yeah, we can do, we can do it right here. Number seven? Yeah. You're cool with that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. I thought we would I thought you I, wanted it a lot lower because the way you were talking about it made it seem like you just like didn't like it at all. Um yeah. There's there's parts that I do like. There's parts that I don't like. What the fuck? Guardians Galaxy 2. Um But yeah, I'm I'm just looking at this list like Civil War, I, it's it's like right there with Civil War. I could go below Civil War. I could go above Civil War. I can but see that. Just win, yeah, Winter Civil Soldier. I, I really like Winter Soldier, but the end of Winter Soldier just kills it for me. Whereas this movie is just kind of funny throughout. You know, yeah. it, it does a really good job with the humor when it does, when the humor does hit. Um, and, and it is about family. I, li- I like that message a lot. Like That's why we love Fast and Furious. <laughs> oh man all right all right go go set the table kid we're about to eat hold on not everybody's here <laughs> jesus uh, christ daddy's gotta oh. go to work jeez yeah fuck man yeah i think that's a good spot for it I, okay yeah. i'm happy with that okay as long as you're happy with it yeah. I do like Guardians more than this one though. The first one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think it's a little more interesting. I like I, the planets I, a little better. E- I the think, planet ego, I feel like it's just kind of 
I think most people agree with you. Actually, yeah. I think yeah. most people agree with you that the first one's better. I just don't. <laughs> That's fair. I, I really like, like the second one, but you know, you go you go uh, through the status quo. You go against the grain. I guess I don't know. That's right. That's what I, I know. I still put like No Way Home at the top, which I think most people like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But is it better than Iron Man? No, I want to. I really want to rewatch it. It's not better. It's not better than Iron Man. There's no way it's better than Iron Man because no. the whole Iron Man's the, the shit, dude. <laughs> now, now we're going on tangent about No Way Home. The whole subplot, the whole main plot, not subplot, the whole main plot of about everybody forgetting who he is, I think, is just kind of. Eh. Um, but like the characters, there, yeah. There's too many uh, plot holes in it for yeah for it to be better than Iron Man because mm-hmm. Iron Man's and, shit and Shang Chi. Shang Chi is just awesome. It's so fucking good. Shang Chi is just perfect. I agree with I feel this like, list except for I feel Loki. Like, <laughs> Loki, I feel like we're gonna have to rewatch Loki. Loki's Honestly, too high. we might yeah, have Loki to rewatch Loki before this whole thing is done, and then come back to it. Um, I, I, I have. A, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for my life for this, <laughs> for next, this next movie one? to be at one. number one. I'm okay. gonna fight for my life, but we'll, but, okay. we'll watch it. We'll, okay, maybe so, I'll change my mind. So, friend, I've only seen this movie once, and I had a panic attack during the end of it so okay um not not the movie is just like a fucking yeah just mental thing i had an episode and uh so you know fuck it man it might be it might be number one for me as well i was just having a bad experience i will say so, i will say this thor ragnarok i think mm-hmm. of all of the mcu movies is the one i have seen the most because really? i just put it on sometimes because i like watching it I do I do like most of the characters in it. Like fucking um Except for maybe Endgame. I, which... I always forget his fucking name. Who's the fucking Korg? Uh, no, I like Korg, but yes, I I do like Korg and his other friend, but the guy, the bad guy in this movie, not Hella, but uh... Oh, the the guy with the with the guns? The oh, oh, who, oh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff uh, Goldblum. I never remember his name for some reason. Yeah. But he's like one of my favorites just because he's so quirky. Yeah, he's so funny, dude. I, um, I love this movie. But <laughs> that's for next week. So Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll watch that on Sunday. Can you believe it? You we've, got, we've got Thor Ragnarok, and then we're watching Infinity War, baby. Let's go. It's oh, fucking crazy. That's it. And then what? And, well, oh, and then in between Captain in between. Marvel and then uh-huh. should we Ant Man and the Wasp and then I should, uh, no we should we're wa- we've watched them in we gotta watch them in release order, order so Except we're Spider-Man. gonna have to yeah. stick with that well Spider Man and anything new like Eternals yeah and true. so uh, yeah so sorry about the little tangent there at the end but uh, oh no, yeah and it, it makes sense it, it makes sense to watch uh, Ant Man and the Wasp between the two movies too. It's an after. I thought Ant Man and the Wasp was after Endgame. No, it's it's literally it ends with him getting vanished. Or You're right with, with them getting mm-hmm. vanished. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. Okay. All right. Um. Thanks for watching. Uh. Check out our little little Check out our little 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 cash shows. Um. And uh. Subscribe. Like. Peace out. Be good to your mother. She's done a lot for you.